Thank you. Uh, my name is Dominika Bula, and uh, it's a bit complicated with, to, with all of this project management and agile practice, but I'm going to explain you how, uh, w what is the difference and how all of that started for me. So looking at that, you are probably thinking, what does one need to learn to become the agile practitioner? Do I need the soft skills? Do I need the hard skills? I am not going to fool you. You need both. But you probably have some already, and you know what you have, so you would need to work a little bit on the, on the other, basically. My journey started uh, with small steps. It was a journey of the thousand steps, because when I moved to Brno, I started with the customer support of the hardware en enablement, and then moved on to the marketing positions. <laughs> Through that, I... Uh, supported my colleagues in RWS uh, Moravia, where I was working with data and then picked up the junior project management uh, job, moved to the regular project management, and after that, off to Red Hat. What was very important and what I believe in until today is that uh, the most important is the incremental change. So one thing that you should be taking away from this presentation is that if you don't like what you are doing right now, and if you feel that there is something missing, pay attention to this, make small changes, and eventually you get a job that you really love. And this is how it worked for me. So what's up with the Scrum methodology? I currently work as an Agile practitioner for an identity management system that is um, basically focusing on the access control solutions and policy for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This sounds very complicated. And when I started with my team, I was thinking, all right, that will be 10 people who can do this. When I look closely, everything overlaps and is interdependent. I counted 52 folks to cooperate with. So how do we make this work? When you think about the Scrum, there's one very important uh, difference. People often confuse Agile with Scrum. Agile is umbre uh, basically the umbrella, the mindset that fits in all of the frameworks that you can use for software development. So there is extreme programming, Scrum, Kanban, feature-driven development. Sometimes agile practitioners use all of these um, frameworks or tricks from the frameworks to support their teams. And this is basically what my team does in Red Hat. We have specific subsystems that we are cooperating with and uh, supporting our teams. So today I wanted to focus specifically on Scrum, but I wanted to let you know that Scrum is not equal to Agile. Agile is rather mindset that you can have, and I hope that you will be experimenting with that at the end of my presentation. So just quickly, five minutes intro to Scrum. This is very basic for this of you who are still confused. What are we talking about here? Scrum is basically, when you think about this, is the way to develop the product, but it's a journey from the idea to actual deliverable, something that we can then uh, move to the marketing and that can be sold to the customer. What is very important, this is team. Team of people that you are going to work with. And uh, you with the first step to that team is that you really look at this closely and think what is missing right now. Because you don't only need like software engineers, but also you need the QE engineers, so not only developers. You need documentation team, you need feedback from the market, you need people with all of this information to be successful. So this is a first health check. If something is not working currently for you in your organization, you look if this team actually gets all of these people or their input and feedback. After we have team constructed, we need to have a product owner who will be translating the market requirements for the team and will be responsible for the backlog. 
in short, basically translating this idea to the specific work items. But the team is still involved there. The product owner doesn't have a final say. The most important is that actually team has a final say. So they are meeting and refining the backlog. And if something doesn't make sense, they do discuss this together and they are both all responsible for what is delivered at the end. So once a team refines the backlog, we have a specific um, items that we are going to focus to work on. And this is actual sprint backlog. This is when we are starting to have a fun. And usually, we agree on some time box. So this will be two to four weeks usually. It's not worth it to do that in the shorter time than two weeks, because this just requires a lot. It can bring a lot of confusion. And what happens next? Team works, but there's also that importance of daily synchronization, because you need to talk to people to understand what is happening. So we are doing daily syncs. People are getting to the room and discussing if there is anything that is blocking him, blocking them, or not working. And we basically move on with our items. We have a transparency to what is being worked on, what is being done. And finally, at, at the end of this time box, two, two, up to four weeks, we do the review of what happened, if our assumptions were right, did we manage to finish what we planned, and we uh, decide if this is a ready item, it can contribute to the final product, or if this has to go back to the backlog or be re uh, reworked. And finally, we discuss how can we improve as a team? So usually we go and pick up one idea for improvement per team and make sure that we really all commit to improving this one thing. And this is how we move on incrementally, quarterly, yearly, and develop the product. So this is ongoing journey. There is one role that needs to be mentioned at the end, and this is the role of the Scrum Master. You probably heard about Scrum Masters a lot. There are a lot of open jobs for the Scrum Masters in Brno right now. So what does the Scrum Master do? The Scrum Master basically makes sure that team understands the values, coaches them, facilitates the meetings for them, and finally, the most important, creates the safe environment. So Scrum Master protects the team coaches the product owner, product managers, and all organization. And this is very interesting. You might consider, when you are interested in this methodology, of becoming a Scrum Master professionally, or become a product owner professionally. If you feel like doing quality analysis or development is something that would be not that exciting for you. So there are many options. And I, that was the reason that I wanted to shortly uh, describe how that works. So you can kind of feel where you could fit in personally. Back to where I started. I started with the team that I currently work with around 15 months ago. And I wanted to make sure that they feel that they have authority and at the same time are accountable to do what they said they will be doing. That they are not being told do this, but they actually have enough courage to tell this doesn't make any sense or there are better ways to do this. How did that happen? So, you know, one of the principles of the Agile Manifesto is that the most important people at the end of the day the most important part at the end of the day are people and interactions between them, not uh, process or tools. You could do all of that without any tools like Jira or Trello. I see people smiling here because those are some hot topics. So talking about the mindset, how does this start and what do we need to pay attention to when we have the team of developers or we want to create a piece of software, what are, like, what are the health checks to make sure that we are doing this right? There are three pillars to Scrum. And the most important is transparency. That means that all of the team is committing to be transparent 
about what they are working on. So no side projects. We are focusing on the one specific things and we are committed to that. It's not like, all right, yeah, we are doing some scrum. Maybe I will go to the stand-up meeting, but at the end of the day, I created a totally different thing and it's cool. This happens. But as we go with the inspection, then we find out that, hmm, maybe this is not what we wanted to deliver as a team. And then we adapt how to make changes, how to involve everybody to be excited in our pro uh, uh, pro pro process and project. When you look at this, that sounds very familiar because this is basically an empirical model. You go, you came up, come up with what do you want to change, you try to implement this, and then you see what, what are the results. On the top of that, we have a Scrum values. And if you are trying to work with the development team, it would be good to have a discussion if they are OK with the values and they are going to agree with them and follow them before you ask them for anything else. So we are creating a shared mindset of agreeing to the same things. This is basically a contract, unwritten. First of all, we all focus on one goal. And this is usually a sprint goal, but could be a project goal. We have courage to say, hey, this doesn't make any sense, or I don't understand this. We have a courage to say, something is wrong. This code needs review. And basically provide the feedback to each other. We are open what might be difficult. So at the beginning of the planning project, you already have your specific experience, and you could see some gaps that should be mentioned at the beginning. So what is not going to work? Let's have a discussion. Everybody on the team commits personally to do the right thing. And finally, this is the most important, I believe, we need to respect each other, because every single of us is different, but we are bringing a lot of value to the project. So we are stronger together. And now, the fun part. When, we, when I was introduced, it was said that I'm technical project manager. Here is the um, catch. In Scrum, there are no project managers. The people who are responsible for the delivery is a team. When I, was at the when I had my interview at Red Hat, I was being asked, what are you going to do if these engineers are not going to listen to you? And I said, well, we need to have a conversation about the company's values first, because this is not only role of the project managers to assure that the project gets delivered and the work gets done. This is a shared understanding that starts from understanding of the goals that we are trying to accomplish. How does this work at scale? I mentioned we have a 50 people, and usually team, team size recommendable will be between seven and nine. So all of these Scrum teams, they work in the parallel. Every single of them have a specific product owner. And because Red Hat is a company that works with the, is an enterprise company that works with, uh, with the open source uh, development software model, we contact the community, and the com community also have an input and say to our backlog, we are uh, processing the work of the community and uh, have a discussion. Is this something that we can proceed on? Is there something that has to be done? Would that be viable input to what we are trying to accomplish? Uh, this could be called scaled scrum model, but I like to call this getting things done. And for me, the most important part on this picture are the green arrows. This is a communication. So when you see green arrows, people basically, they need to communicate on this level. If this is not going to happen, the project is going to fail. So product owner communicates with the team and the Scrum Master. They go the level up, and they agree with the uh, stakeholders if this is what is expected. But we also have a discussion with the community. If one of those items will be missing, it's probably not going to work. And you're going to provide feedback that 
we tried Agile, it didn't work for us. Finally, there is one thing to remember and take away. It's that the most important is that we all agree to embrace the unknown and change is a natural part of life. And this is going to happen. So in Agile project management, you don't plan everything from A to Z and don't make any adjustments. We assume that we'll be doing adjustments and things will be changing as they are changing in the real life. So the most important thing here will be to stay open. And now I have some call for action for you. If you want to read, if you want to learn more about Scrum, anything related to open source software or anything related to product development, I encourage you to go and investigate what is hidden in open source.com pages. You can all become the contributors and share your own stories there. All contribution is welcome. If you want to get more experience about the Scrum, then it would be a good idea to download one of these free Scrum guides. These are translated to 30 languages, so they should be pretty good. You just look them up online and digest a little. And finally, how do I know that I'm ready to become a Scrum Master or Agile Practitioner? Go to the scrum.org. There is a community who provides you with the feedback. You can take free assignments, test yourself and get results, and start your own um, journey. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Actually, keep the mic for yeah. uh, for questions. Um, we have a question here from Eva, which uh, actually follows up nicely to your ending, and that is, where did you personally learn Scrum? I, uh, you, you can say that basically it has to start with the mindset, as explained before, but I went through self-reading to work with the teams, I learned a lot with my uh, teams in Moravia before I even moved to uh, Red Hat. So we were already practicing the daily scrums there, even though we were not developing the product per se, rather localizing it. And uh, all of these places that I suggested, this comes from my personal experience. Those are basically steps that work. You can, of course, have tons of certifications, some of them very expensive, but if you want to learn more about Scrum or have this basic knowledge that gets you started with most of the companies in Brno, you can self-learn that. And um, if you have any experience with the customer support, project management, those are already good steps to work with the teams because you already know how to troubleshoot them, how to communicate, how to coach people, how to offer the... Uh, solutions that they can test and try on their own. So those are all, all of those are baby steps that you can take to actually get there. Amazing, okay. Um, what is your next topic to write about on uh, opensource.com or anywhere for the matter? I'm part of Agile uh, practice and DevOps um, community of practice in Red Hat. So we are trying to show how uh, the importance of Agile practices and the continuous delivery and continuous development. So what I'm working on with my, one of the engineers that is on my team is to write actually the cheat sheet of what is the best path to get started with DevOps when you are thinking about uh, using them on your own projects. Nice. Okay. This is another thing. You can find a lot of material there just to, you know, find the specific steps of doing things to help you start it, to have an idea if you're going in the right direction, or comment on them and write your own piece. Hey, this didn't work for me. I have a different option here. Nice. Okay. We just have uh, one last question from Martina that just came. It's a very interesting one. Uh, is there anything you would like to change about Scrum? Well, Scrum believes in the incremental change, right? So uh, for me, one solution doesn't fit all. I presented the basic steps, but let's not uh, 
let's not uh, say that this would work for every team. Some of the teams, you cannot just come and tell them, hey, we're doing Scrum, let's start tomorrow. Here's the backlog. We, you have these two weeks, we are working on this, right? So in many cases, if I would change something, maybe it's the starting point is to go and see how the team actually works and what they need. Because usually to be more efficient and work better and be more happy as a team, they will probably need some other changes before they start with the specific project management methodology because this is what it is, right? So we need to do the health check first. Nice. Okay. Thank you so much, Dominica. This is Dominica Bula, everyone.